Last week we took a look at the local seniors. This week we'll find out how to be a successful college student. Education Today starts now. Welcome to Education Today. I'm John Zisch with the Armstrong School District. What is it like to be a senior in high school these days? And what issues do seniors have to tackle as they get ready to step into their futures? To find out, we're going to hear from seniors in the Armstrong School District. We're also going to talk to a high school guidance counselor and a college professor who helps freshman students learn the secrets of college success. First, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Fran Rusinski, a guidance counselor at West Shimokan Junior Senior High School. We also have with us Dr. Carmi Carranza from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Carranza, thanks again for being on the show, coming from IUP. And I was wondering if you would please outline some of the factors in college success. Well, John, when I do get a chance to speak to students and parents about the college experience and that transition, I like to set the tone by reminding them, first of all, of what a tremendous opportunity they're about to engage in by having made this choice for post-secondary ah. education and that it is not only their privilege, but it's their right. And therefore, they have to think of it as, as, not, as something that they should not take for granted, something that they should not squander. With nice. that, I also like mm -hmm. to congratulate them because they have made it to that step. And that's not to be taken lightly as well. Uh, but also that everybody can graduate from college but anybody can fill out a college. So Fran's been talking about their academic background and preparing and their SAT and their ACT scores and all of that certainly are strengths that carry them into hopefully a successful experience in college. But those, non -cog or those cognitive measures of success are not the whole picture. So that's why I say anybody can fail out of college because there's more to it than just how well they did. In fact, the SAT is going to kind of be off the radar screen for them. They'll have placement test scores maybe to put them in the appropriate schedule, but now they're to embark on behaviors that they are in charge of, behaviors that they have to engage in in order to be successful. One of the difficulties I see with new students is that they have become used to being passive. Fran talked about putting things off, for example, avoiding things. Things happen for them. Things get done for them up until this point. So one of the areas of um, success that we see students need to really adopt early is being intentional about their own learning process. Hmm. Um, What's that mean exactly? That means that there are really two factors, if we get simple here in the time we have, that um, characterize all success. And there's no difference between success in college and success in anything else. The first one is commitment. Commitment, passion, goals, desires, determination, whatever you want to call it, it is the intention to succeed. And along with that goes hard work time and effort. Difficulty is sometimes that students don't necessarily have quite the commitment yet because someone's told them to do this or select this major. They don't know their major. Not to worry. Being in college is a time to explore your options. You do need to set goals short term and long term. You do need to come to terms with where your direction is, but you're also exploring at the same time. Oh. Effort is another thing. Uh, in the senior year, a lot of students don't really put a lot of time into their last year in terms of their study habits. It's their time to relax. So they've got that transition to make. But understanding what effort really means it, in college can be very different from what it was in high school. So learning what that means in the concrete is very important. I like to tell students to think about their college experience as a job. It is their job to be in college and to do well. So what does that mean in terms of time and effort? If you were to use the formula of putting two hours outside of class in study and preparation for every hour, minimally at least, for, uh, that you are in class, then you've got a 45-hour work week. 
just you like have a job. To, just like a job, and you have time for the other things in your life, just like a job. The difference is, and that's another factor in college success, time management. That time schedule that you have to be able to manage is very, very different from a regular 45-hour job. So one of the very important things for freshmen to get a handle on is a time management schedule and actually learning how to create one, how to follow one, how to evaluate one, how to monitor it, to, to learn that it's very, very important in their decision making, in their academic goal setting, to be able to draw up their daily, their weekly, their monthly, their semester schedule, to keep lists. They're going to have to manage a lot of different uh, commitments in the classroom and out of the classroom academically, but they also have a lot of personal things to take care of. And that's another factor in, in, in freshmen or another risk in the, the freshman experience is all the freedom that they have. And the free time. And the free, to... They think they have free time. See, ah, that's, that, that's what's tricky. Uh, the semester goes by and you think, well, I didn't have a class on Tuesday and Thursday. I have classes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm free on Tuesday and Thursdays. No, you're not free on Tuesday and Thursdays. So you have to build into this plan very deliberately using all of your syllabi and all your requirements. When am I going to do this? When am I going to study for that? When am I going to keep up with that? How am I going to prepare for this exam and this quiz and this test? Um, how am I going to get that project done? All of that has to be done with a real deliberate decision-making process. So those off days, quote unquote, are not Tuesday off. and Thursday, <laughs> they should be studying and yes. preparing? Yes. Uh, I like to tell students you have no time to waste time because that's really the truth of it. You are facing now the uh, prospect of being on probation, not of being kept here because you want to be or because someone said you could. Uh, attendance, attendance in class. Studies show that one of the most important factors in any college uh, experience, freshman on through, is attendance in class. There is no substitute for being there. Just showing up can give you a better grade than, you know, some students say, well, I can get a C in that class if, without even going. Well, why would you want a C in a class that you can get an A in if you go? Um, I like to tell students that if it helps them, Calculate, how much does an hour cost me here? Get the consumer mentality in them going. Um, and then every time you are tempted to make that decision, to, to not class. go to class, to stay in bed or to go out with your friends or whatever it is, think about what you're wasting. And suppose it is a mediocre grade that you get. Did you want to pay for a mediocre grade? Or it's a D and an F or an F and you need to repeat those or you want to repeat the D and you need to repeat the F. What are you doing? You're paying for it again. So I tell students, remind them that it seems as though many college students are the only American consumers who are happiest when you do not give them what they pay for. Hmm. So again, if you put it in the, those terms, uh, you know, sometimes it makes the, the point and they're able to uh, engage in the very concrete behaviors that are going to make the difference, both in effort, hard work, and, in, and intentionality. I believe in one of your materials it says uh, when you skip a class intentionally in, in college it's like burning a ten dollar bill. At least. Uh, <laughs> it's, much it. yeah. oh, <laughs> it's much more now. It's much more now. Yes, yes. Uh, another uh, bit of advice I would give students is um, to align yourself with positive role models, positive involvements. Mentors. With mentors, with people who care about how you progress. And you can find those. They're all over every institution. You just need to look for them. You need to know what your resources are, and you need to take advantage of them as quickly as you can. Be proactive. In our um, Learning Enhancement Center, for example, we, our data shows us that the students who participate in the out-of-class peer assistance programs, the supplemental instruction, the tutoring, the workshops, 75% of those students ha are in good academic standing, mm. and 50% of those students have a 3.0 or better. Those so good what, numbers. Yes, it is, and what does it really tell you? It says that the student who is the strong learner, the strong student, is the first one in line. They're the first one to say, I don't know, help me, give me this. They're not a f they don't consider it a weakness to say, I don't know, or I need help. So if that helps students then to, you know, see what it takes, that it's not, not to let things go. Because again, too many students think, this will go away, or I'll take care of this, or it'll happen for me again. So take advantage of all those resources. Again, you're paying for them. 
uh, consider failure as something that you really monitor, evaluate, and analyze and attribute to the right source. Mostly me. <laughs> you know, why did I not do well on that test? Uh, rather than start blaming. You know, oh, okay. you know mm -hmm. that professor didn't really like me. Take or, responsibility. Yeah, just or take ownership. responsibility for that. And that's what successful students do. They say, as one of my students told me, um, F is for feedback, not failure. Oh, that's a good way to look at that's it. That's a good way to look at it. Hmm. Uh, let me see other things. Uh, go meet up with your professors. You know, get to know all of your professors. Make it a goal. Again, these goals are very important. Uh, make it a goal to have at least one appointment with every professor that you have a class for. Be prepared for that appointment. Do it before midterms. Go in with maybe um, the questions about feedback. You know, how am I doing if you don't already know? Or if you do know, how can I do better? These are my notes. This is how I'm studying. Uh, this is what I don't understand. How can you advise me? How can you help me? Professors really want to do that. They're very interested in knowing that their students are interested in them. They spend a lot of time studying this, hmm. and they spend a lot of time preparing to avail you of their knowledge and information. So the more interested you appear, the better your grade will be. There's no question about it. You know, we're all people too, and subjectivity just can't be kept out of things. Sit in the front of the room, make eye contact. If you're not interested in your liberal studies or your general education courses, find a way to be interested. Sit up front. Think about, you know, why did this person spend this much time on this? There must be something that I can get from this. So again, it's being intentional. It's really making those kinds of efforts. We've been talking about making a successful transition from high school to college, and I thought it would be quite interesting for students and parents to hear from the source themselves. So I've invited two students from IUP, undergraduate students, who actually work in our Learning Enhancement Center as paraprofessional peer educators to talk about that transition and those adjustments and the factors in success from their perspective. So today you're going to hear from two students who actually graduated from the Armstrong County School District, Shane Lentz and Devin Bowser. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves, your year in school and major and so on. Um, I am a sophomore here at AUP. I'm a nursing major. And my job here on campus, I'm a peer advisor for the Learning Enhancement Center. Okay, and uh, where did you graduate from? I graduated from Catanning Senior High School. Okay, welcome. Hi, I, um, I'm a psychology major. I'm a junior right now, and I graduated from Fort City High School, and I am a peer educator, and I'm also a supplemental instruction leader. Okay, uh, well, let's start by, you're talking a little bit about your own transition. If you can put yourself back there and remember what it was like, uh, tell the audience a little bit about uh, what w maybe one or two major transition or adjustment issues that you had to deal with? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I feel like for me personally was time management. Time management was a really big thing for me because in college you're out on your own, you're by yourself, you don't have parents telling you what time to go to bed, when to do things, whereas like in high school that's what's going on. But whenever you get to college it's like you have all this free time to yourself so it's basically, really, you've got to set yourself to where you know what you're doing as far as time. Like have time for studying and just all of that stuff. And even like leisure time, you've got to have some leisure time for yourself. And I think that is one of the biggest things for me personally. To was be, the, was yeah, the time yeah, down definitely. and okay. Learning how to have your college job and also another, yeah. another life and fitting that all in in a yeah. very unusual schedule. Okay. Uh, Devin, what do you have to tell um, us? I would definitely agree with what he said. Um, prioritizing was a really big, uh, big problem for me. I'd never had to deal with that before. Before I would just, you know, follow with everybody else, and we all went to the same classes, and the teachers told you exactly what you had to do and everything like that. And I came to college, and I had to, um, like, go to my classes on my own, and I had to take all the notes, and I had to study and remember that I had a paper due, and I had to prioritize and manage everything together and figure out how to fix it all and that was really something that was difficult for me. Okay, very good. Um, now we've, we've said that you work with students who come to the Learning Enhancement Center for services of a variety of kinds. Um, in that role, 
and you have two different roles, peer advisor and supplemental instruction leader, peer tutor, um, you uh, come face to face with students and their problems. So tell us a little bit about what you see in that regard coming your way as support folks for other students. Devin? Um, I would say that what I know seems to be the biggest problem is that um, students will come in the night before a test and they suddenly realize that, wait, I don't know anything. And um, they're like, overwhelmed and stressed out because they suddenly realize that they aren't prepared at all. And um, that seems to be really the biggest problem is that they don't realize that you kind of have to start studying a bit before the night before and you shouldn't procrastinate and stuff like that. Okay, so time again, time Definitely, management yes. again. Okay, big issue. What about you, Shane? I see a lot of students come in and like just really discuss like about classes and how they're struggling it. And then I bring up, oh, well, are you attending class? Mm. And a lot of times students are, well, I go once a week, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you need to start going the whole week so you have the whole understanding of everything that's going on there. Because that, that attendance, that's very important to be successful. Because if you're able to go to class, you're, gonna, you're doing part of the battle right there. Okay, that's half the battle. Very, very important. Good. Okay. Uh, how about just kind of looking at the whole landscape of your, your, um, your classmates? Any other things that you see that you would like to warn other students against? Or maybe some successful ways in which you see your classmates operating that you'd like to pass on? Uh, aside from, you know, students that you work with here. Any, any other of those sorts of t uh, issues? Uh, I see. I see a lot of students that uh, will like go and they want to join groups right away, and they get so congested with working groups and everything to where they don't have time for academics at all. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people end up failing out because of that. That's what I saw in my freshman year, whenever I had some friends, you know, pledging for fraternities and mm -hmm. sororities and whatnot, and that really hurt them as far as their GPA and everything for their freshman year. Mm -hmm. and, and that early success is really important, isn't it? Yeah. What about you, Devin? Um, I would say that there are a lot of opportunities on campus through different organizations. And yes, academics definitely do come first. Mm -hmm. um, but once you figure out that whole aspect and you figure out when you're going to study and everything like that, then you can start looking at different activities. And um, there's even things like you could go study in another country. I actually did that for five months. Mm -hmm. And um, you could, there's so many opportunities that you can take hold of and really make this like a whole college experience and not just school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you both sort of mentioned it, but this uh, kind of uh, getting your academic feet well planted early uh, before you get involved too much in other things or before you would have an opportunity to do really wonderful other experiences like study abroad. Uh, talk a little bit about that r importance of that high QPA right out of the chute and what it can really do for you in terms of satisfaction and, and performance and development from there on. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think, uh, first of all, getting a high GPA right away, that's, that just helps you down the line because whenever you get to your junior and senior classes, they begin to get more difficult. And then whenever you have that 4.0 GPA or 3.5, that really helps you stay put. And it's like you have that to fall back on still, even if like you're struggling in a class. I mean, it's just, it's just a great way to start out instead of starting out with, like say, a 2.0 Somewhere, somewhere in that vicinity, and as you progress and you get into more difficult classes, and it's just like, uh-oh. Yeah, know, so. it's hard to move that grade point average up or down. Mm -hmm. So if you start out high, then you have what you're talking about as a kind of cushion. Mm -hmm. Devin, anything to add to that? Um, I would say that a lot of people will get discouraged if they um, end up doing not doing too well at first and then they'll have a tendency to get stuck and think well I, I'm bad at school and I, you know it's just not going to work for me and then a lot of those kids actually end up dropping out and so if you would end up really trying hard at first and like well throughout the whole part but if you end up at first like getting like a real high QPA and stuff like that then um, you start to build a self-esteem and motivation and you're like yes I can do this this is something that's possible for me well, you know, one of the biggest struggles that new students face, and even older students, is deciding on a major. What can you share about that process that will help students who are concerned about that? Devin? Um, I would say that I 
well, there were so many things that I was interested in, and I had trouble narrowing down at first. And then finally, I end up picking psychology, and I was like, I thought, well, this is something that really makes sense to me, and it, it really seems like something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went, I was like, I'll take a couple classes and see what happens. I actually on, almost ended up switching my major to something else, but then I really started thinking about it, and this is what makes me happy. This is what I enjoy learning about, and what I would like to do for the rest of my life. And so that's why I stuck with it. Okay, so you're pretty strategic about it, but exactly. at the same time you were open mm -hmm. to other options, whatever those options out there were for you. Shane, what about you? I know you, you've taken a course in career exploration, right? Yes, I, that was pretty much what really got me to thinking what I wanted to do because in that class or through the program, they uh, pretty much have every college that's here on campus and they discuss all the majors they have available. And uh, through uh, the allied health professions, I found that nursing was very appealing to me. Mm -hmm. And I really just, through that, like going through that day of class, and it's like learning about it, it just really intrigued me into being a, like a nurse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you started out undecided. Yeah. Or, I mean, you didn't even yeah, try I to pretend no, that no you clue, were No <laughs> clue what I wanted okay, to do. Okay, good. All right, well then, this uh, uh, taking advantage of a resource like a course, finding out about your strengths and your abilities and your interests and pursuing all of the avenues on campus for being able to explore those different options is really what students need to do, I hear you saying. Okay, yep. and that choosing a major, you're really here to find out who you are and to uh, find out about the world of, of occupations for yourself and interests for yourself. Good, thank you. What about resources? Now, you two are very much involved in delivering resources. What can you tell? You know, students are going to go all to many different institutions, but I would imagine that you'd want to encourage them to learn about the various resources on their campuses. Uh, tell us a little bit about the resource topic. Devin? Um, I would have to say, well, I mentioned there's study abroad things. Mm -hmm. um, there's the different departments will offer a lot of um, activities and like sometimes they'll have like special like clubs for the different majors and stuff like that and so that'll help you sort of figure out if like this is really something you're interested in and I think like organizations like that are really things to take a hold of. Okay. Anything to add to that? I was Shane? just going to say like there's things around campus like the library there's all kinds of different resources in that aspect to where you can mm -hmm. do things and eight, like places to study it's kind of helpful in that aspect. So take advantage of everything actually Again, we talked a little bit about the consumer attitude towards college. If you have to take it that way, mm -hmm. you're, you're actually paying for all of these resources mm -hmm. and they're all there for, at your disposal. You really yeah. need to take advantage of them all. Um, okay, uh, you talked about involvements. Um, let's just, um, and, and do you have anything to add on any of the topics that we've already covered? Because what I'd like you to do is kind of put yourself back there again. You're sitting in that orientation, you're a new freshman, but now you know so much more. What kind of advice would you give someone like you sitting there, these new students that are going entering college, that you would like them to know about starting this whole experience? Uh, well, first of all, I'd probably tell them, you know, utilize the things around campus. Don't think go by going to tutoring, you're dumb for doing it, mm -hmm. because that's probably one of the smartest things you can do is seek that help to get you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, good advice. What about you, Devin? I would say, um, the, well, the typical go to class, take uh -huh. your notes, what it says on the buses at IUP, call your mom. Um, <laughs> but you definitely need to really kind of take a hold of it for yourself and prioritize and schedule and everything like that and have fun. Okay, I like that. Take, take care of yourself. Exactly. Um, be intentional. Mm -hmm. make, make this happen for yourself. Good. Well, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. I'm sure that the students out there in our, in our audience really have taken, will take to heart what they hear from other students. And uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Really appreciate that overview. Um, and I want to thank you for coming from IUP to be here, Dr. Carranza. Thank you for having me. Mrs. Rosinski, thanks for coming thank from Washamokan to be here. That's our show for today. I hope you had a great time. And uh, I would also like to thank the Ford City High School TV production class, which was our film crew for today. I'd also like to thank our Armstrong School District High School guidance counselors who gave expert advice for the show, including Sandy DeForno at Ellerton and Rose Valasek at West Shemokin. 
Have a question for one of our guidance counselors? We may do a follow-up program, so get your pencils out for this email address. E email us your questions to this address, and if we get enough questions, we may be able to do a follow-up program. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. For more information, visit our website and have a great week. Will you be spending Thanksgiving Day alone? Then please join us for a free Thanksgiving luncheon for Armstrong County residents. This year it will be Thursday, November 24th from 11 a.m. to 1 at Catanning Area Middle School. Is your family unable to afford a Thanksgiving dinner? The Armstrong School District Foundation and Student Services Learning Clubs are hosting this Thanksgiving luncheon for the less fortunate in Armstrong County. Are you unable to prepare a traditional Thanksgiving dinner? Armstrong School District students, staff, teachers, and administrators will serve as volunteers at the dinner. There will be roasted turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, vegetables, and of course, cranberries. Donations are also gladly accepted. Interested in coming? Call Lisa Hawk, ASD Transportation and Technology Secretary at 724-763 5214. That number again is 724-763-5214. We hope to see you there on Thanksgiving Day at Catanning Area Middle School.